let's go outside. What do you think? Now's the time. The door opens. So we have a number of places available to us. Shall we go and see the land house? Or shall we go to see Ferret? Let me know what you think. Ferret! Ferret is such a babe. Is people misremembering the four accurately mystic shit? People not wanting to recall such an event and blocking it out, or both? I think it's kind of both, and it also means that during your recollections, you're able to make kind of further choices about literally what happened. It's kind of a hand in glove way to influence the narrative a bit and what you know about other characters um, and how they acted at the time. Does Ferret have ferrets? I don't think so. They don't know why they're called Ferret. Crunch. Oh, my incense went out. Hold the phone, everyone. Well, it went out really early. I was like, where's my amazing atmospheric smell? Oof. All right, so the game now is telling me when I'm changing locations that the outfit I'm wearing is giving off a certain impression. <laughs> this is intentional. It will give us the opportunity to change our clothes if we want to, in order to achieve a specific outcomes when we go somewhere. So um, you, have, you can change your clothes in your bedroom anyway, but now the game's like, ah, you do look like you're trying to go courting right now. Is that what you want? Um, I should change. That's what I wanted. What does it matter? Uh, oh, there's a bottle. This is what I wanted. <laughs> Okay, and Ferret is quite open to our outfit. That's what I like to see. Real person of the street swear. <laughs> Here for a spot of eradication. Suffering from undesired company in your place of lodging by any chance. So I can lie because we've already established that we are a terrible liar. Due to what I'm wearing, we could flirt. We could provide only my name and say nothing of my family's past. Um, pom, 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 pom. So we are a liar, so let's just lie. Let's be horrendous. The more I lie, the more new stuff comes up that I've never seen before because I don't tend to lie. You must allow me to make myself known to you. Hannah. <laughs> I'm going to start introducing myself that way. <laughs> In the shops. You must allow me to make myself known to you. That's that's kind of... It's a great way to introduce yourself. Uh, I enjoy that. Okay. Ferret, but you can see that on the shop window. Oh no, I'm such a liar. Oh, f shit. Before the fall, I was the MP for this area. <laughs> was I? Shit. My family owned a good portion of the land. Christ. Oh, did they? Pleasure to meet you. So here now, we can bring up the news. Which I think is really fun. Yes, the clarinet music is wonderful, isn't it? I just love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just... I don't know why, but doing, like, evil-style playthroughs... I just... It isn't in my nature. Um, but I'm always led astray by a chat, unfortunately. So let's talk about the news. London merely wrapped in an ashen cloud. Yeah, the rumours of a cave roof and falling rock are dismissed as a, a misunderstanding. All right. Oh, Harjit. 
Oh, I wasn't expecting you till this evening. I'm saying to customers, as you can see. Hello, Hannah. I already know the customer. Oh, we've met, have we? I'm just by with a warning about the pub at the corner. More unusually infested, is it? If the public can hire you to clear the place, bring help and fire. Hmm. So this conversation can happen at a number of different points and we have not in this playthrough yet actually met Harjit, so this is probably a slight bug. Um, but here we get to see uh, another new thing that hasn't really been talked about yet. Um, we can secretly decide how we feel about another character, something that we keep to ourselves but that confirms to the game what we are thinking and feeling about that character. Um, secretly harbour romantic feelings for him, conceal a desire for him, quietly recognise a desire to befriend him, or change none of my opinions about him after all. So Harjit's come in with news of like horrendous beasties and it's like, oh okay, you're more than just a local constabulary then I guess. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really want to conceal a desire for Harjit, I want to be completely open in my desire for Harjit. Um, <laughs> let's do that. The thought hits me, but I don't show it. Mm, that'll be spiders. Oh, he does so much for the neighbourhood. My boyfriend! Good of him to warn you. He works hard for this neighbourhood. I love him so much. He has his place and I have mine. That's true, Herb Ferret. You also work hard for the neighbourhood, but you get paid. I don't know, I don't know how hard it's making any money. Back to business though, eh? What else can I do for you? Okay. Let's get a census question out of Ferret. Uh, if you've played the demo, you may have seen this, so I'm going to rattle on through it. I'm not going to flirt with Ferret. Ferret's got their own stuff going on. Ferret's the only name I go by. And no one saw fit to tell me if it was a forename or a surname. Might have come down to me from a noble house, for all I know. Courtesy of my great-grandsire and his wife, Lord and Lady Stoke Weasel. That's one of my favourite lines. <laughs> Lighter pages about being a 12-foot tall bat and see his reaction to that. <laughs> uh, let's try household organisation. Simply, do you live alone? There's no one in this city that lives completely alone. Only question is how small are the beasties that live in your place. But you won't find a live rat in this building unless I invited it here with an engraved invitation. Thanks. Thanks, Barrett. They're very into their craft. Simply. Let's just simply ask about this. Do you live by catching rats? The money's in rats and moles and spiders, like it says on the sign, which I now notice you can't see. <laughs> the spiders is new. It used to be most people was happy to hit them with a slipper and be done with it. Oh no, is it hanging again? Okay, let's complete our census about ferret so we're collecting census information at the behest of Grizz we don't want to disappoint her we also want to make some money um, there are lots of ways to spend that money uh, we'll discover as we get into it um, we owe money to our landlady uh, and we can go to various kind of shops markets and things um, so we really do want to hand in some of these pages at the end of the first day <sighs> are you married or otherwise connected Strange thing, but I don't fancy speaking of it. It's my shy and delicate nature. I write down, refuse to answer. Fair enough, ferret. Who are these masters anyway, and why are we colluding with them to, to fill in census pages? Let's see your pockets before you go then. Not nicked anything you shouldn't have done. Oh, ferret has perceived that we're not on the level. <laughs> I've never had this line either. Awesome. Oh, very well. Can't be too careful in these parts. 
can manage one more errand before supper. Let's go and see the Landau's. Shall we spend time with? Uh, shall we spend time with Harjit, or shall we go and see the Landau's? What's redactal? Oh, redactal like Wordle, like redacted Wikipedia Wordle. That would be fun. Hajit is just too hot. He's too good looking. He's a cop. What am I supposed to do with that? Where am I supposed to put these feelings? <clears throat> I would love to get a world record breaking score on Redactyl by, by realising our own Wikipedia entry. <laughs> I never look at it though actually. Because you're not supposed to update your own Wikipedia page, are you? So I just don't look at it unless someone tells me I have to look at it for some reason. He did, yeah. Hodgett volunteered to be a cop. Picked up a uniform and put it on, essentially. <sighs> I don't know, man. Hajit's whole story is amazing. Let's follow. I've decided. Let's go and talk to him. Flirt with Hajit. Mm, 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 mm. It's what I always do. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> he turned up as the constable of these streets right around the time London fell. I didn't see him around here before that, but he's watched over the neighbourhood since. Hello again, Hannah. I have something for you if you want it. He produces a nearly new admiral's hat in perfectly good condition. I found it near the docks, no sign of the owner, and I can't wear it myself. I thought someone at Mrs. Chapman's might get use out of it. Perhaps Lady Griselda. Why, thank you. The grumpy hat. This is the grumpy hat. Um, thank you. You're too kind. You could have got a penny or two for it by selling it on to a second-hand clothes merchant. He's silent. Uh, I am going to explain that I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. I'm not wearing my badge, which makes people less likely to um, cow to my authority. <laughs> I don't have my badge with me, but I'm collecting census information for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. London was determined to collect everyone's name even before the fall. That's a peculiarity of the English. You aren't the only ones ever to count your citizens. What do you wish to know? Yeah, so what's the deal with your with your work? Of course I'm gonna flirt with Hajit. What well, I'm I'm only human. There's something I like to ask all the new people I meet. You wouldn't happen to have any additional occupations besides the obvious. You can see what I do. That's not precisely an answer. Hmm. Do you have a disreputable secret? Or is there something you wish to conceal? A reason you wear that uniform that would not bear investigation? He laughs. I rely on your discretion. I came to London for entirely different reasons. A constable on my street died on the first night buried under the rubble of a building. I claimed his uniform and his lantern. That's when I first visited your boarding house. Okay. What's your full name? <clears throat> oh, I should have flirted with him. Damn it! What's your full name? Hajit Singh, an uncommon name here. I grew up in a large house full of people, built to withstand the heat of Lahore. My mother had beautiful rooms off, to the, co off the courtyard, open screened to catch the breeze. It was a mark of our family's wealth. 
Now I live alone in the dank cave and it's all I can do to keep the draft out. Oh, buddy. Can't stop now. Too many senseless questions. Matters of the heart. I'm going to simply ask about his romantic connections. I'm going to flirtatiously ask him. Oh, don't be sad, Hodget. Is there anyone special in your life, Hodget? He gives me a lingering look. Even before the fall, I would not have married. My companion was not a lady. He was an Englishman who came to the Punjab. We became acquainted, and then more than acquainted. I thought he and I would remain together throughout our lives. I followed him here away from my own country and everything I knew, to the home of my former enemies. You promised me that it was worth the sacrifice. You said we would never be separated. You will observe that he isn't here. Mm. Oh, Hajit. Solidarity, man. I'm on your side. You're a very sensible person, clearly very wise. <laughs> I've been looking for him since the night of the fall. I walked on streets that were tearing themselves stone from stone, looking for him. You still want to find him? The moment I see him, I will know whether he's been waiting for me or whether his absence has been a betrayal. Living in fear is no life. I should be on my way. I've already been here too long. You make me forget where I should be. Mm -mm. Do I? <laughs> it's getting late, so I'm heading back home. I'm not going to change my clothes. Everybody needs to see my buttonhole. <laughs> oh, no. Got to be careful. Got to be careful with our turns of phrase. Oh, it's Seamus. Thrall Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we've added a new location of Thrall Street. That's where you can pop outside to see Hodget. Seamus says it's new since the last stream. <laughs> My proposal of placeholder street, formerly where Dutch fishmongers gathered, was vetoed. Seamus, if we come across any of your holding text, I'll be very happy. Yes. And there's lots of um, bat squeaking. <laughs> Look, I'm doing my best. Grizz is waiting for me. Whatever census forms you have ready, it's time to take them to Mr. Pages. I'm ready. Let's go. I am ready. God, woman. Three. Maximum. I don't know if that's the maximum. Yes, so we're going to go and see the bazaar. This is one of my favourite little transitions in the game as well. The way is serpentine through streets that do not seem to lead towards the spires at the centre of the city. But each time I look up, it is closer, the spired building on the horizon. Look at it! Finally, we find ourselves standing in its shadow under its walls. Look at the size of it. Imagine existing in the shadow of that thing. That's some Final Fantasy stuff. Oh, Paul. Yeah, Paul drew most of the characters. All, most of the characters in Mask. I just look at the thing. It really lit up a thing in my brain. It turned a light on in my brain when I saw this screenshot for the first time. I was like, oh shit, this is what they've been dealing with. Before us is a low door that once I think belonged to a solicitor's office. Grizz takes out a key made of something other than metal and unlocks that door. Mind the pile of papers, I've already sorted them three times. Mr. Pages is very particular about the ordering of documents. Now, where has he gone? Usually he's here by this time of day. Oh, there you are, sir. We were just coming to bring you the census documents. 
a first instalment of many, I'm sure. Mr. Pages, may I present Hannah? Hannah, this is Mr. Pages. The whole Ministry of Accounting and Recounting is under Mr. Pages' direction. Ooh. Stand well back and make no sudden moves. Mr. Pages is extremely tall and its arms are very long. And Pages has a high pitched voice, so I'm just going to go for it. <clears throat> I've done this before. And I don't. I don't know if it's significantly embarrassing enough that I should stop doing it. Okay. Quiz. Reassure your intimidation, underclerk. <laughs> Mr. Pages has a. It does have a surprisingly high voice for someone so large. You're completely safe here, my lady. What have you brought us? So we can hand over the pages that we've collected so far. <laughs> Death Prophet, look. I'm doing my best. Ah, <laughs> oh, most satisfactory. There are secrets here. He gives me two shiny pennies for my trouble. Yes. I turn one over and it has a portrait on the back of someone who is certainly not the Queen. The face on the back of the coin stares at me until the hair prickles on my neck. It reminds me of a debt owed and I don't want to remember and my breath hitches and slows and resumes. I'm holding two pennies now. Good for me. We did not expect much from Archie. Undercarn Grizz having already revelated that he is a lightless character. What else is there? If a bat could talk, you've got to be honest, it would sound like that. Hand over a finished census page about Harjit. Let's just do that one. The bazaar is in the bit of London where we used to have an office. So one of the visual represent one of the visual kind of inspirations for the bazaar is what was originally the Millennium Dome. This sort of massive, organic kind of parabola shaped thing uh, that. That appeared in sort of 1999 ish to celebrate the millennium in Greenwich. It's huge. It's now the O2. It's a huge arena. And we used to have an office on North Greenwich uh, Peninsula right next to it. And a lot of Fell Better staff, then we spent a lot of time in the dome and like living with it. Um, and then I think, I can't remember now what state it is in. They must have fixed it up. But when the weather was really terrible recently, it was, it was only like basically a giant tent. It wasn't really ever supposed to last for like 23 years but it, it has um, and it became torn and ragged and weird and I got a bit sort of emotional about that because I do think of it as the bazaar <laughs> uh, he offers me two pennies from a jar bringing my stash to four nice there are other things in there and a few things that aren't even coins buttons pearls probably false a horse head carved from ivory or bone the quality of your information impresses us this time I haven't read this pages as I'm allowed yet. He is circumambulant. It seems you mean to pursue him? <laughs> oh, he's got me read. It seems, however, that you take an interest. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Hmm. Contemplate. No, I haven't had this option before. I mean, there's a possibility he has an interest in me. Hodgett did seem to be interested. Yeah, yeah, we used to have that office there. And then we moved from that one to a converted Victorian chapel in the heart, sort of heart of Greenwich. And from there we moved to London Bridge. And then we moved to another place in London Bridge. And now we don't have an office. We haven't really had very much luck with offices. It was nice being in the one that was really high up because we could see all the way over the city um, and right over across the top of the bazaar. And it was very like imposing and fun. Um, but then, yeah, we have not always had the, the most salubrious of offices. <laughs> okay. I, I think he might have an interest in me. Hmm, I suppose it's possible. Or speculant! <laughs> what are you talking about, Pages? It reaches into its jar of pennies and fishes out another. 
There is more if hearts are broken. I try not to go too far towards like Dobby the House Elf territory. An accurate and historician recounting omitting no particularity of despair. He knows what he wants. All the details of a happy ending. I'm sure those would also have value. If it is happy, it is not yet an ending. Bloody hell, pages. <laughs> oh, Death Prophet, I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. It's, it's good, right? We're making a good game. Mm, we had an office that was on St. Thomas Street, which is directly outside London Bridge Station, like right there. And it was opposite um, the Museum of Surgery, which had an operating theatre made of wood that you can go visit. And about like 100 metres from Borough Market, one of the most fantastic food uh, that put a real dent in a lot of our wallets <laughs> at the time. These days I wouldn't even be, like, the way things are, I wouldn't be going there so much as once a month. Do you have anything more? Why, yes. I diddly do. Mr. Pages takes the census page eagerly and spends some time scanning it. There is something it's looking for, something it keeps looking for, that it cannot find. Pages continues turning the pages over and going back and forth between them for a long time. Inefficacious, this way of capturing menaces. We have better ways. The Ministry will make them known. For a moment, no one speaks. Uh, I want to get on. I'm away. Bye. Is there an official set of guidelines for generating Mr. Page's vocabulary? No. Uh, it's done on heart, guts. Heart and guts. Chris is particularly talented at it. Uh, but Chris is working on <laughs> the, the new one. Pretty much exclusively at the moment. Um, M is pretty good at it. I think we all have fun doing pagesisms. If I get to put a pagesism in a tweet, then I consider that a good day. Oh, there are some guidelines for it. I wasn't aware of any guidelines. Smush words together until they sound juicy. <laughs> Grizz accompanies me out again when it's time to go. As we make our way back to Horatia's, she asks me what I think of Mr. Pages. Yeah, a lot of Pagesisms are done on vibes. She tries to make it sound like an idly curious question. Uh, be careful around him, obviously. What's his agenda? I tell her to watch out when she's at the ministry. She doesn't ask why. She's just silent for a few minutes and then in a different voice asks what food I would have back from before the fall if I could have anything I wanted. We fill in the rest of the walk talking about strawberries and freshly baked rolls. Before we go back inside the house, she reminds me. We have many more people in the neighbourhood to survey for the census. You know how it's done now, so you can collect them and take them to Mr Pages yourself. I have other duties, and I may not always be there, but Pages is... Well, I'm certain you won't be harmed if you visit the Ministry on your own. Cool! Say, you think about Mr Pages a lot. I'm not going to get into that. She does not meet my eye. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a one page of advice on how to write pagesisms and uh, you want to the, the advice is essentially juice those words up <laughs> um, yeah it's done in, done on heart guts I was going to say heart guts are nuts like go for it but uh, I, I think maybe that's three innuendos in one stream and that's probably all the innuendos I'm allowed hello George Despite everything, there are still broadsheets printed. This morning's lies open on the table. Masters of the Bazaar prohibit burning of more than six candles at once. Candle shortage ongoing. Huh. Interesting. So, we have... Mm, I have to go get my kid from school at like four. So maybe we have about half an hour left on the stream. And... I think we should use that time exploring. 
Let's get out there. We have limited time, so recalling the past is perhaps not the best use of it. So now we have the route open to us to go back to the bazaar on our own with any census pages that we've discovered. We also have 6p, which is great. So to discover new routes to other things, we can go back outside Thrall Street and talk to Hajit again, and he's kind of the mechanical way that you can find out new places to go. But we do have the Landau's townhouse, um, an interior that you won't have seen. I think... Yeah. So let's take a look. Oh, I'm allowed seven innuendos. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. That means I've got four more. <laughs> oh, who's this? Good morning. I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. Oh, maybe I should have put my badge on. But how then could I flirt? I'll see whether my master and mistress are at home. Why, oh, thank you. Hello, it's David and Rachel. I'm going to flirt with both of these people. Boom! Nothing extraordinary about the words. The effect is all in the tone of voice and the look I give with them. Allow me to present myself. Hannah. I often think of the scene in um, Anastasia when they're kind of auditioning people who might be the princess and there's the woman who comes in in the big fur coat <laughs> and she goes like, Mother, it's me, Anastasia, <laughs> and drops the coat on the floor. Just picture me doing that. The lady laughs. Do you know, I think I forgot how to speak to someone like you. I know the gentleman reacted to me there. Ooh, ooh. I'm going around town making friends. David and Rachel Landau. Rachel is my sister. What can we do for you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing the census. I don't have my badge with me, but I'm collecting census information for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. I'll answer your questions, my lady, if you answer mine. Call it character research. So, Rachel is an authoress. Are you having peculiar dreams down here? What do you mean, character research? I write novels. They are published one chapter at a time in the Lily of London magazine. I was in the midst of one when the fall happened. My publisher insisted that I continue the story despite all. Rachel, are you certain you want to share so much? Does it matter? Surely those precautions are behind us. Yeah, the social order is, is changing. Okay, well, what's the story about? If you take the Lily of London, my lady, you may have the pleasure of reading my next chapter yourself. Though I confess I'm still at a standstill as to what it will contain. My heroine was meant to be set off for Paris, and was meant to set off for Paris, and there to be reunited with her lost beloved. But as the fall has transpired in fiction as well as in fact, I must resign myself that the courtship is ruined. Oh, shall we offer some timeless wisdom? That's right, that's what creatives love, is the lay people just coming up to them and telling them how to do things. Yes, with that kind of boor. Uh, time heals all wounds. <laughs> well, I hope that helped. Right, I'm going to try and find out about you. Matters of the heart, David. I'm going to flirt with you, David. Are you married or otherwise promised? Oh, not recently. I was in love once, or so I imagined. Charlotte Carringham. She and David had an understanding. She converted in any case. Becoming Christian suited her social aspirations. Rachel. Yes, yes, I take leave to dislike your unworthy suitors as heartily as you dislike mine. Milton is a yellow-eyed, flash-dressed, hot-handed creature at least two decades too old for my sister. Yeah, at least two decades. Oh yes, are we enjoying it in the Landau's? Milton! I hope we get to see Milton. I haven't actually been to the Devils in this build, so we'll see if we can get there. I hardly think he and Charlotte are comparable. Do you have any... Let's ask more about Milton. People like Milton. Oh dear, the rules of polite society have broken somewhat in the fall, haven't they? Nothing of the sort. 
he looks just slightly less guarded. Nice. Milton is an artistic inspiration. If you are not a writer yourself, my lady, you cannot guess how much the fall has disrupted our sort of work. Characters have certain tastes, certain preferences, certain prejudices. She's so dramatic. All I need to do is imagine them in new circumstances and their reactions right themselves. Hello, Anne Rice. But now, we've all been at least a little bit cracked by the fall. How does anyone behave? Who can say? You always said you wrote from observation. You can still observe. Since the fall, there's no pattern in what I see. It's only home that makes sense to me, and I cannot make my whole novel about a brother and sister lighting candles at Shabbat. Yeah, the menorah has seven branches. Seven candles? Fewer than seven candles at once? What are the masters up to? Yes, exactly. Uh, ask why not, out of curiosity. Why not? My publisher wouldn't tolerate it. The Lily of London wouldn't print it. The rest of the world must come into it somehow. Milton helps me sort the rest of the world. He can make sense of anything, even a Viscountess running down the street in her peignoir. It's easy to understand a misbehaving Viscountess. Everything else is stranger. Let me say, Hannah, Milton smokes rose-scented cigars. He helps me. <laughs> I'm on Milton's side. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. See? Milton quotes poetry instead of making conversation. Oh, you know, he does sound like an ass. It's one of the things I like about him. My lady, your appearance reminds me of something. I have a research question. Do you find that you speak with new people after the fall? Sometimes people you would never have spoken to before. Hmm. Sometimes. But I'm glad to meet new people. They're often interesting, especially on the present occasion. It's almost enough to make me glad the fall happened. Thanks, my lady. I doubt you mean that. He makes no effort to hide. Oh, whoops. whoops, and we've got a typo there. Whoops! About your eyes. Okay. What's happening in your house? Ask about their house. Who else lives in your household? Oh, Morgan, I know. I love them too. Every time I come to a new environment and talk to new characters, I flip and love them. And I love this backdrop. This is one of my favorite. I keep saying that. It's one of my favorites. It's it's lived in. It's realistic. It's got, it's covered in the trappings of, of their like lives. And the ceiling is cracked. So it's just that little something that, that indicates the fall. Who lives in your household? Our home contains myself, my brother and our housekeeper. It isn't a grand establishment. We had a Jewish housekeeper for many years, but she passed away and Phoebe had lost her place with a neighbour of ours. Hmm. Well, there she is. Let's try and get a page done before we have to leave. Simply ask what David... I'm going to flirt with you, David, because you're cross with me. Now, I'm curious, David, what line of work are you in? We have money in the funds and interests in several businesses in London and elsewhere. The time was when I used to be very busy in answers, answering letters from Livorno, from Amsterdam. These days my time is not so extensively occupied. Ooh, you all right? Oh, it's just my stomach again. Why is it troubling me today of all days when I haven't eaten? Tomorrow we must find you a doctor, even if we have to choose someone you don't already know. Well, Archie could help. A young man at my lodging house is trained in medicine. He's been helping all sorts of patients recently. I could ask him to call on you. We shouldn't trouble a stranger. His sister puts a hand on his arm. That would be a great kindness, thank you. She reaches into her bag and takes out a calling card. It proclaims her identity as Miss Rachel Landau, authoress. Oof. We must go. Perhaps we'll meet again. Look after yourself, my friend. There's time to run another errand. I think we should go and try and open up another route. I want to try and get over to the Devils. and I'm not sure exactly how to open it up in this version of the game. But I think talking to Harjit might help. Ah, then there are lots of bats 
at this location. We're gonna just tweak the battage down. I return. Oh, Hannah, I feel you're toying with me. Oh, imagine. I would never toy with your affections. I found you very attractive. Thank you. I've tried not to make my interest a burden to you, but I also haven't tried to conceal it. Oh my word. Oh my word. I, don't, I haven't had him say that exact thing to me, to, and I think that means that maybe a snog might work. Are we gonna... Are we gonna give... Are we gonna try and give Harjit a kiss? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Should we try? <laughs> oh my gosh. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, this is maybe... Because I've played a lot, but I don't usually like play hard to get the romantic stuff to, to happen. Um, this might be the first time a kiss works. I don't know if it will work. I actually don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm, let's try. I lean in. Hajit glances left and right. Oh my god! Then he takes my arm and leads me into a dark nook, a place where the alleys bend away from the lamplight. His voice is ragged when he speaks. Holy nuts! It's happening! It's happening! <laughs> it's happening! Okay. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. People watch the streets. Fair enough. I mean, you're, you, you know, you're a refined man. You've got concerns all over time. He has me backed against a wall. He's leaning into me. This safe enough for you? Yes, we love consent. Hard it, we love consent. Oh, maybe, and he's concerned about, oh my gosh, he's concerned. Maybe I should, for his, for his, for his sake, maybe I should double check. Boss hasn't seen this either. <laughs> ah! Okay. Encourage him. I'm not feeling patient. Yeah, sod it. I pull him in, and that's the last bit of conversation either of us bothers with for some while. Ho! Take this further. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Maybe I could. Yeah. Come up to my room, Harjit. You know that there's someone I'm still looking for. His name is Lucian. I can't abandon the promise I made. Oh, buddy. I will stiffen my upper lip for you. But I'm not setting aside my appetite. Why should any onlooker be privy to my thoughts? They are mine alone, however painful. <laughs> we got a kiss. We snogged. This is fabulous. It's nearly time for supper. How am I supposed to eat? I'm not going to survive this game and we're fucking making it. <laughs> All right, excuse my language. All right, that was exciting, wasn't it good? Oh. oh my word, oh my word. Okay, let's go straight to the table. I'm starving. I'm gonna eat a tiny bit of my snack. Children, friends, people. Oh my gosh. I need a moment. <laughs> yeah, me and the... um. Our Discord mods are called Auditors. Me and the Auditors have been rending our, our hair <laughs> a little bit over how um, how much horny posting we're going to get, basically, in the Discord when the game comes out. Mm. So this is a new view on dinner. Now we have an environment here where you are sitting at the table. It's pretty good. It's pretty good to, to be actually sitting at the table with our housemates. It's really lovely. Oh, Archie. Poor Archie. How was your census taking proceeding? Have you met anyone new? Yes, and... I'm going to mention Rachel's employment as well. I know Grizz will be interested to know about that. Rachel is an authoress. Is she indeed? That is promising. 
Perhaps I can contrive to be introduced to her as well. Uh, yeah, um, I think this question needs a little bit of tweaking. I'm not sure it quite hangs together. <clears throat> as if, if I was expected to ask. Oh, no, no, no. I was curious, that's all. Mention the news of the prohibition on the candles. Oh. Oil lamps and gas lamps are not included in the prohibition. Archie's mouth compresses. She does not comment on it. Hmm, Grizz. <laughs> you know, if you need to do thirsty posting, maybe we do need to come up with a tag that I can just ignore in order to be able to continue doing my job without crossing some wires. <laughs> How can we? I met Harjit's tonsils. Oh! <laughs> I got snogged in an alleyway. I'm beside myself. I've got to, I'm going to log off and immediately tell M that I got snogged in an alleyway. It's very, it's, it's a funny thing. <laughs> We're all like grown ups making a video game, but like walking around the fact that this is a video game that does have like romantic and passionate scenes in it. I <laughs> do not archive like Magnus archives. That's that's not a bad idea. I think I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm working on it. We've introduced a um, we've introduced a what's name an emote into the Discord. Uh, that's just a, a master holding up a sign that says stop. <laughs> and I think that is uh, that's going to be helpful. But I hope people take that seriously. We can use it jokingly, but also like if I come in there and say stop, then. We have to be mindful that some people are not going to play the romance options and don't want to see that stuff. So, I just don't want to open a not safe for work channel in there. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I don't want to imagine. Right. Uh, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm just going to eat my dinner. I want. I can't. We went to Harjit to get a route. We were trying to get to some new locations, and instead, we got pashing. The first few days weren't bad. People had food in their pantries still, old loaves of bread, leftover joints, roots and jams. But nothing new was coming to the markets, no new fish, no new vegetables from the farms. By now, supper is finished. Horatia stands and begins putting the dishes away. Thanks Horatia for looking after us. Archie finds me upstairs after dinner. I kind of stopped thinking on the Ministry of Cartography. There's something not right there. If you'd let me show you what I'm thinking of. Mr. Pages is unsettling. He's not a comforting companion. He looms. It's not his height that worries me, or not in the main. Hey, Ultimatum! I explored some new locations. They were Harjit's lips. <laughs> it's a sign of it being a bit peculiar. While he's talking, he's getting out bits of paper written over in his own handwriting. I have a few suspicions. You tell me what you think is most likely. So this is the way that story crafting looks at the moment. Um, story crafting is a way in which characters can ask you for your thoughts and theories and stories to do with the murder, to do with love stories for Mr. Pages, for example. Um, and you kind of piece together what you know on your little murder board here with your red string, essentially. Uh, and then you, you kind of complete a story that gets generated on the right hand pane there and you can then hand those into people um, to further the plot. So here we have a couple of options on each of these. Let's find out. These ones are all locked off. So this is the work that Archie has done. Thanks Para. See you soon. Thank you for coming on in. Okay, so here we're developing Archie's theory of what Mr. Pages is up for, up to. He hoped for power in London, was employed and employed someone in plotting. Grizz recommended forming ministries. Uh, he hoped for love. Pages maybe is in love with Grizz. Or maybe Pages hoped for power. I think maybe he hopes for power more than love. He wants love stories, not love. Um, Grizz may be expected to be given authority and power. So we can see the story developing 
as we change options. Uh, Mr. Page has dreamed of power. Grizz hoped to make herself indispensable. Mr. Page has found any number of small tasks for Grizz, furthering its schemes and goals. Grizz recommended forming ministries to manage London. Then Mr. Page has schemed about how to gain power. With what consequence? Grizz expected power and influence. And, yeah, Pages does enjoy power. So w w what happened? So d he did establish a ministry then. And she defended him. And the outcome is that she has no regrets, perhaps. <coughs> so the story becomes he schemed about how to gain power, established the Ministry of Cartography and Chirography to go alongside the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. Grizz anticipated power and influence. She depended Mr. Pages to a credulous population and did her best to paint it in a sympathetic light. Grizz regrets nothing. And Mr. Pages now enjoyed tremendous power in London. Maybe that's what happened. So that's our theory. Uh, so, the, will the locked options that Archie's come up with be different between playthroughs based on you've how, how you've interacted with Archie previously? In this example one, I don't think there's a great deal of variance in the example one because that's more like a, a tutorial one and we're going to re-tutorialise that a little bit I think to make it even sort of more clear what you're doing and how things are locked off and why because um, it's just a lot to receive straight away um, but further down the line you will you will have kind of accrued tons of these little tokeny pieces that can go in all those different slots um, really really broad ones to the point where you can start fabricating stories that are based on nothing that actually happens in the game at all. Um, you know, like, like sort of remixing um, locations and people. Uh, so it gets quite flexible. Makes sense Mr. Pages should be keen for power, aye. And Grizz, I suppose, tells it how to rule London. Right, I have maybe five, ten minutes left. So let's see. There are other possibilities, probably. I don't think those were the only possible explanations for what's happening with the ministries. We only hear about them from Grizz, but there are other people involved. Aye, well, if you think of more, you can let me know. Every day you find out new things about the city. He lingers a bit before he goes to wish me good night. Oh, sleep well. And didn't look out the window if you can help it tonight. The air's got more critters in it than usual. <sighs> what about the window, then? <laughs> don't do this. Let's do it! Fallen London player character, engage. Archie's right. There are bats out there, but larger things too. Something passes very near the glass and is gone again. So, yeah, we've discovered loads more story crafting tokens there. So, kept maps, so contraband things that people could have done in these stories. Um, locations, people. Gang, day 234. Good Lord. I cannot believe that we managed to cop off with Harjit. That's the first time I managed to do it. I'm so excited. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, let's have a quick, quick squiz around and see if we can just squeeze one more new location. Theological concerns within the Anglican Communion prompt formation of new synod. Whoop. See him about some new destinations. Quick squeeze. My dear. Hey, hey. You return. <laughs> oh, Grizz. Grizz! Shove off. Good morning, Grizz. Off to the ministry again. I have a new organisation scheme for the census results, which I must try. Uh, I'm going to step aside. Grizz seems animated, Hodget amused. Finally, Grizz throws her hands in the air and heads off towards the ministry. Show me a route. I'd love to kiss you again, but... Ah! Right. Let's have a quick, quick peek as the last thing we do at one of these locations. Which ones? Which one should we go and see? Yeah, it certainly will bear 
replay, definitely. There's huge amounts of stuff happening in this game. Even though the actual game experience is like, you know, end to end, seven, eight, nine hours, give or take seven to nine hours. Hogs Lane Market. Whoop, okay. Yes, market, great, okay. We'll hop over to the market. For the first time. Exciting. So we walk together, and every few moments Hodgett stops to point out a landmark, or draw my attention to the places where the air smells different or the sound of the church bells can be heard. Only when we've walked all the way to our destination and all the way back does Hodgett proclaim the teaching complete. Here we go. It's probably just a corruption of Hogs Lane, but keep your pet pig on a leash all the same. I'm going to have time for another errand. We've got four more minutes. I'm going to log off in like four minutes. So we're going to pop straight back out to the market. Boom. Look for possible census takers. That seems efficient of us. Ah, who's this? We've met before. Might I speak with you for a moment? Let's just stop and have a look at the environment here. Hats, pins, masks, clothes, sundry unspeakables. That's London. And it is indeed a mask shop. We are in the season of confessions. Wanna go shopping? Sundry unspeakables, yeah. I'm not sure which market Hogs Lane. <sighs> Might I speak with you for a moment? I can't stop. I've got the shopping to see too. Appeal to her sympathy. Only the ministry sent me to ask these questions and if I can't get the monsters, I'll be turned off. And I don't have any other work. They don't pay well at that. Oh, why didn't you say so? I've no love for tax collectors and government ministers. And what they say about the masters would curl your hair. But I've been in your place often enough. What should I put on the census as your full name? It's Phoebe Riley, Irish as you might guess. The Phoebe with my father's idea, or so I'm told. He was a schoolmaster on his better days. I'm not going to pry. I don't have time to pry. Thank you. Matters of the heart. Census style. What should I put down about your romantic attachments? For the census, that is. I'm not married. It's not easy when you're in service. The household might not like you having gentlemen callers. I'd best be going on. Rachel Landau will be wondering where I am. Good luck with the rest of your questions, and I hope the ministry pays you well. Thanks, Phoebe. At this point, I go back to Horatius. Straight to the table. What's for dinner? Thank you, Tiger. Thank you so much for coming by. Speed run, speed run. <laughs> so we've discovered another person, Phoebe. We met her at the land house. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There's Horatia. Grizz is staying late at the ministry, is she? Who can say? But if anyone can feed her, they can, so I trust she's well. Though I don't like the thought of her in the streets alone after they've turned the lights down. Horatia, you're too sweet. Ah, oh, well, well, she won't listen, if you tell her. This morning I was in the basement checking our supplies. Is there much down there that's not mine, then? I'm saving a jar of pickle for Christmas. Something to give us a taste of old times. But I found a couple of rats down there, reading the labels. They were sounding out the words. I mean, obviously animals can now speak English. Oh, I believe you. Every time I reckon I have the measure of things down here, it turns out much worse than I thought. It's Ratter's Faber! Anyway, that's a wonderful sentiment to end the stream on. Thank you, Archie. Gang, I had so much fun. I had so much fun streaming with you today. Fabulous. Um, I don't know when the next stream will be. I would love to show you some more specific things. Um, so maybe, probably in the new year now. I'd like to schedule in some dev streams at different times. 
it's difficult for me because as you know I have two small children and I have to do things for them constantly and um, putting aside big chunks of time to do streaming is quite hard uh, but it's always so much fun when we do it um, it's just been a delight thank you so much thank you everyone who came from the discord we love you and we are so glad to have you with us on this fabulous journey to the launch of mask of the rose um, <laughs> i can't believe we got to, to smack lips with harjit i've been trying to do that for actual months so that has just been totally worth it that made the whole day worthwhile um and don't don't forget so we have the stream is uh, done for today. I'll do some more in the new year. We have a live event at the end of March in Old Truman Brewery. It's called WASD and it is an indie game event. We will have a stand there. There will be four places to play Mask of the Rose, an almost finished version of Mask of the Rose. Um, and the lots of the team will be there. And we're all going to try and eat some jelly deals. So if you want to get in on that, come to WASD. Um, and then also there is going to be a gallery show at the British Library next year from June to October that will feature Fall in London. So if you are in London during those months, please go and check that out and say that we sent you. Um, so I, yeah, please don't go on Discord if you, unless you are really, really keen on the idea because Discord is like a oh, attention, attention sponge. Um, we're on TikTok, we're on Tumblr, Twitter, Fell Better Games, everywhere that it counts. Um, and it has just been a super delight to see you and have you with us. Um, if people want to see this, it will be available on Twitch and I will put it up on our YouTube in a week or so um so that people can <laughs> watch back over my absolute astonishment as i get to kiss a policeman um thank you all so so much and we will see you next time bye